to talk about how to have a one on one conversation. Just a reminder, some of you here are experts. Uh, and so that's great. And we're going to need your expertise. But some of us need a little reminder, you know, like a lot of us have been doing a lot of zoom stuff, you know, um, and but we're going to go out into communities as we're opening up safely um, to talk to our coworkers. A lot of you are working on the front lines. You're not in zoom. You're in the workplace. Um, and so we're going to make you uh, remind you that when you're going into work, you know, you have your routine to break your routine a little bit by bringing a pledge card, you know, break your routine a little bit when you're going to the subway station or your transit station to bring your pledge cards to have a conversation with the people around you. That is breaking our habits and what we're used to because we're gonna organize every day. We wanna have conversations every day. That's how we're gonna to get to our goal. So I'm gonna share my little screen to just show what a good organizing conversation or you know decent organizing conversation looks like. Uh, and hopefully I have it here uh, because you know how it is with tech. Can everybody see my screen? It says steps for an effective conversation. The steps for a good conversation, we're gonna talk about them because we're gonna launch a pledge card where you're gonna get folks to make a commitment to come out on May the 1st uh, in any community that actions are happening and to vote on June 2nd. So the first part of a good convo is to introduce yourself, maybe break the ice a little bit, say, holy crap, you know, that was a long shift. Maybe you're in the lunchroom of a hospital and you, you're understaffed and you share a little banter and share a little bit about what you're going through together and connect on something. You know, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, then a little bit of listening, you know, begin by asking questions. Anybody here heard of 80-20? Do you know what that is? I'm going to look at the chat. Put it in the chat if you know what 80-20 is. I see Gopalee say 80% listening. Hey, hey, that's right. 80% listening, 20 talking. And look at me, I'm doing a lot of talking, so it's not easy, right? Yes, that's right. Ask questions. Active listening is asking questions. Like, how do you feel about that? It's a good question because if you told me how I felt about having to pay $1,300 a month for childcare while barely able to you know, pay all the bills and pay for rent, I would tell you it hurts every month. It hurts. And uh, and it makes me angry, you know, and I love the ECEs. And I'm so lucky that my daughter gets to go to this incredible uh, place for child care with these amazing dedicated workers. But they deserve better. Those workers deserve so much better, you know, and parents deserve an easier way, you know. So if you ask me how I feel about that, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you how that's really, really hard. So what's at stake? You know, what's at stake if the Ford government gets another four years, things are going to get much worse. We talked about that. What is it going to take to win? You know, what is it going to take to win? We know that mobilizing lots of people to take action and voting is what it's going to take to win, at least some of the things of what it's going to take to win. And then we got to call the question, are you going to come out on May 1st? Are you going to vote on June 2nd? And then we're going to make a follow up plan. Make sure you have a plan to continue the conversation and ensure that they are being followed up with. Because without a follow-up, people just get busy with their lives, right? Without us following up with them and making sure they're coming, they might forget. And also, they might think, maybe you don't think this is so important that you're not following up anymore. So on that note, I want to introduce some amazing friends of ours that have decided to do a little role play for you all to showcase what a good conversation looks like. Um, so I'm gonna introduce Elise Lai, Vice President of QP1281 and co-host of QP Ontario's official podcast. Uh, I didn't know that, Elise, that's amazing. And I'm gonna introduce Kumsa Baker, a community and labor activist supporting the movement for good jobs in Toronto and the director of campaigns at the Toronto Community Benefits Network. So the role play that uh, Kumsa and I are gonna do, we're gonna be two healthcare workers and we're gonna be discussing Bill 124. Kumsa, that shift was brutal. We've been understaffed and overworked for years. I'm completely exhausted. How are you feeling after this? Yeah, it's been such an exhausting shift and um, just looking forward to getting home and, and being able to rest. Yeah, me too. Do you have any plans for the weekend? 
Um, well, I have a family dinner this evening, and so looking forward to that and, and definitely enjoying the weather for sure. That's great. Um, I'm planning on going, and going on an expensive trip, the grocery store. Have you seen the rise in costs for milk and paper towels? Just the other day, Melissa told me she spent like $9 on cheese. Are you feeling the rise in prices too? Yeah, I'm actually not looking forward to going to the grocery store uh, this week. Uh, I remember the last time I did groceries, um, I spent quite a lot and I didn't get much. And uh, it's, it's starting to become a, a big issue for sure for me and my family. It's ridiculous. All of these prices are rising. But you know what's not going up? Our wages. And I found out why. Have you heard about Bill 124? Bill 124? No. What, what's that? So Bill 124 was brought into effect by the Ontario government, the Ford government, about three years ago, and it suppresses the compensation and wages of healthcare and public service workers like us, and we only really get a mere 1% increase per year. That's not even in line with inflation, and life is expensive. I have to take care of my mom, who's in a long-term care facility, pay for childcare for my two-year-old baby, and I have to pay for a roof over my head and groceries. It's all way too much. How wow. has our low wages impacted you? Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. I, I actually did not know about this uh, new legislation. And um, I think that's absolutely ridiculous, especially like all of the costs going up and, um, you know, seeing that our wages are going to be capped. I, I think that's going to be such a that's very ridiculous. And I think it's going to have such a big impact. And, and so, you know, um, yeah, like, um, is there anything that you're doing um, like because um, I think that's ridiculous and. And we, I think we need to talk about this more with our, our coworkers. Yeah, I agree. Like we work so hard just to be able to survive, but I did find out of a way that we can fight back. Workers across the province are organizing to fight back against the Ford government and raise the demands that matter most to working class people and our communities like us. There's going to be a huge rally on May 1st in Toronto. And May 1st, which I didn't really know too much about, it's actually May Day. It's International Workers Day. So it's not going to be just us fighting Ford in Ontario, but there's going to be workers around the world fighting bad bosses and their government. In Ontario, there's going to be healthcare workers, education workers, social service care workers, university workers, and more. And we're going to be demanding the repeal of Bill 124 that is badly hurting us, but also fighting for paid sick days, climate justice, land back for Indigenous communities, immigration status for all, and more. It's a day to fight back, but also a day for us to build solidarity with other communities that have been attacked by Ford. We'll be chanting and screaming, and there will be kids and families there, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. But I want to know, how do you feel about this? Have you ever been to a rally before? Oh, wow. That, that sounds so amazing and, and exciting. Um, but um, I've never been to a rally, and um, I don't know if that's something for me, like getting out there and, and being part of a rally. Like um, what, it, what usually happens, and like, um, can you explain more about what a rally is maybe? That's totally fair. And I can actually tell you maybe just a short story about the first rally I attended. It was 2015, I believe, and I was in university and we were standing in front of either Rick Dykstra or Chris Biddle's office. I can't remember which one it was, but they were the elected official in St. Catharines at the time. And we were demanding that Syrian refugees and all refugees be let in the country and guaranteed a home. I was really, really nervous because I'd never been to a rally before. So I met up at my friend Annika's house and we made signs and we headed to the action together. And we had a really, really great time. We met a lot of new activists, saw some of our friends and afterwards we left the action together and went to this cute little cafe, Mate Cafe for drinks. Having someone to go to and leave the action with made me feel a lot more comfortable. And that was what we're gonna do with folks from our union QB6364. We'll meet, stay together, and leave together so we all feel safe. And I totally understand your concerns about the rally. Um, and I do want to let you know that there probably will be police presence at the rally. And I know that as Black workers, we're more likely to be targeted by the police, but there is strength in numbers, and we're going to be there together to protect each other. So what do you say, Kumsa? Will you pledge to join the May 1st rally in Toronto? Yeah, after learning more about that, um, definitely count me in. Uh, and I'm definitely maybe also going to share it with some friends and to see if uh, they can also join, because um, it seems like it's a really fun event and uh, I won't be going alone. So I think that makes me feel much a bit more safer. 
Yay, I'm so excited that you'll be joining the fight with me. And while May 1st is an important action to attend, we also need to show up on June 2nd, election day, to really vote for it out of power. Do you usually vote in elections? Um, I usually do vote, but I, honestly, I don't pay attention to that till like the week before. Hmm, I see. Yeah, that's like some of my family members also. Um, but I was thinking, since the Ford government was the one who implemented Bill 124 and is the reason our wages are staying so low, will you pledge to vote Ford out on Election Day, June 2nd? Yeah, that's uh, absolutely ridiculous. And um, I think that's a, a big issue that's going to impact me. And, and uh, so I definitely will be voicing uh, my support for parties who uh, and against Ford and, and to make sure we vote them out uh, and to ensure that, um, you know, this legislation does not pass through. Great. Well, here's the pledge form that you can fill out confirming that you'll be there. Um, by signing the pledge form, it confirms to the Ontario Federation of Labour, that's the lead organization that's planning the rally, that you'll be there. And they'll keep us updated about the rally, provide us any safety updates, resources, and more. Does that sound good to you? That sounds awesome. I'm so happy we were able to connect before uh, leaving our work today. Me too. Um, and I was also thinking, do you think you could also talk to a few other coworkers by next week, Friday, and try to bring them on board for this too? I'm trying to track all of the workers on our floor and see how many we can get to sign the pledge. Maybe you can talk to Dina and Ahmed. Um, I can definitely try. Um, Adina is a, a really great friend, and um, I, I'm sure she would be open to the conversation. And uh, if I have any questions, can I follow up with you? Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, maybe I'll touch base with you at the end of next week and I'll follow up. Um, I'm going to head home now, but thanks so much for this conversation. It really lifted my spirits that we're going to take action together. Awesome. Enjoy your weekend. You too. Bye. Woo!